dear students and participants of the course on railway engineering today we are going to talk about varied aspects related to the railway tracks and these are related with buckling hogging battering corrosion and corrugation in the rails if you remember in the previous lecture we talked about one another aspect associated with the rails and that was creep in rails under that particular discussion we have discussed the various effects which the creep may cause on the track what are the reasons due to which the creep may be caused in the track and then on the basis of those reasons certain theories has been created and three of such theories were discussed and then finally we talked about the creep indicator and how the creep can be measured on a track and then the remedial measures so that the creeps can be reduced as i said in today's discussion we have uh, these five aspects related to the rails buckling hogging battering corrosion and corrugations we'll be looking at all of these aspects one by one we'll try to understand why these happens and then what can be the remedial measures with the help of which the track can be brought back to the normal condition or a good condition or the rails can be improved so that there is no issue in terms of the defects in terms of the distresses in terms of any other such condition which may make the movement of the trains on those particular rails a difficult one or hazardous one let us start with the first aspect that is buckling of rails now on the photograph which has been shown to you on the right hand side you can see that there is some change in the alignment of the rail they are not straight this is a straight portion even if it's a curved section it should have been a smooth curve but that is not happening there is a change in the direction of that rail and this is one aspect which is defined as a buckling of the rails is what we are going to discuss now now when we talk about this it says it occurs when high compressive forces are created in the rails which are associated with the inadequacy of lateral resistances in the track so that means the amount of forces which are going to be there on these particular rails which may be because of the high loads which are being carried it may be because of uh, certain conditions of the track where the loads which has been carried otherwise in the normal condition even those can also not be sustained so that any any reason which may be causing these high compressive stresses or forces in the rail that may translate the rails into a buckled rail and this distortion usually occurs during the hot weather and why during the hot weather and during hot weather there is going to be a change in the temperature or this change in the temperature will be with respect to the mean temperature of a rail and when this difference occurs and during the hot weather when there is expansion then the rail is moving that means it is changing its size so whatever the rail section which we may have in this form say this is a 13 meter long rail with some expansion it may come to this position now when this expansion is happening and there is a gap here which is being provided because there is another rail which is attached to the previous rail then depending on this gap condition as well as the width which is being given here as a gap and the movement of the rail with respect to the temperature change that is delta t there can be inadequacy and that may cause again the buckling of the rail now another thing is that location or junctions where one stretch is liable to creep say we assume that this particular rail is going to move 
and when we say creep that means we are talking about a longitudinal directional movement and this is what we have discussed in the previous lecture. And we have also discussed that this creep they may be location specific, they may be conditions specific. So, it may happen that this rail is having a creep, but there is no creep in the rail which is ahead. Now, if this happens and this rail starts moving, what will happen at this gap? The other rail is not moving, but this rail is moving, therefore, this gap is going to be reduced. And when it reduces, it will start putting the pressure on the forward rail. And when this pressure is being placed on this forward rail, then what will happen? That this rail will try to remain its position because there are certain resisting items which have been provided in terms of the connectivity of the rail with the sleeper. So, the sleeper and those fastenings, they are not allowing the this second rail to move in the forward direction, but the another rail is coming and that is where these gaps have continuously got reduced and finally, the forces will be there. And because of those forces, what will happen these heavy compressive forces, they will cause the buckling of the second track. So, this is an issue here which needs to be taken care of. So, what are the conditions under which the high compressive stresses may get induced? First one, inadequate expansion gaps. See, an expansion gap has to be provided of 20 mm, say for example. And what is being provided is 15 mm. That means, it is not adequate enough to take care of the expansion of the rails when there is a change in the temperature. And here, when I am talking about this change in the temperature, I am saying this is a positive change. Positive change means the temperature is increasing above the Tm. So, in those particular cases, then the stresses are going to be induced. Then another can be the failure to counteract the creep in time. Just we discussed about it. So, we have identified a track. On this particular track, it is also being observed that the creep is going to happen and there was a creep indicator being placed at say one location where the marking has been done on the rail uh, foot and it has been observed that it has moved a distance. That means, it is moving in the right hand direction. Or if it has been on this side, then that means it has been moving in this direction depending on in which particular direction the more forces are acting. So, if we have not been able to counteract this by way of the type of fastenings, by way of the anchorages, by way of uh, strengthening of the system, then there will be a condition where high compressive stresses will get induced. Non lubrication of the rail joints. Now, all these rail joints, if, if they have been provided with a fish plate, so there is a, another rail on this side and then there is a bolt and nut assembly with the help of which these fish plates have been placed on these rails. Now, these bolts they needs to be lubricated and they should be lubricated before the winter. So, that this whatever greasing is here it should not get hardened and if it gets hardened then the relative movement of the rail with respect to these uh, fastenings will not be possible. And if it happens, then it is going to create more stresses not only in these bolts faces, but also in the overall track. So, this is another issue which needs to be taken care of. Uh, maintenance is one issue here and maintenance with respect to winter or with respect to summer. These two are different aspects. Then lateral resistance being impacted due to the inadequacy of the ballast and operations like deep screening, lifting of track, slewing of track etcetera without taking adequate precautions. Now, these lateral resistances they may be there because of the movement of the trains at the top of the rails 
and because of the lateral movement of those trains where the we have the result uh, wheel base and there are forces which are acting in the inward outward directions depending on the track geometry. So, in those cases if these lateral resistances they get impacted because of certain maintenance works which have been taken on that particular slab. So, on that track if it is being done say if you are talking about uh, say the screening the deep screening has been done because the ballast has gone bad and so you have to make a change in that and there was a requirement of lifting of the track or the ballast even whatever is being used there is not adequate in terms of the ballast thickness or the cushion. So, if these precautions with respect to these inadequacies have not been taken care of then it will impact the lateral resistances and finally, it will come back in form of the high compressive stresses in the track. Then another thing is the inadequate resistance to track due to deficiencies in the ballast. When we say deficiencies in the ballast, it can be in terms of the, the cushion depth, it can be in terms of the size specification And there in the case of size specification, we talked about the oversize and undersize and the percentages which are being allowed. It is not that any of the sizes can be used. So, any such deficiency which is there in the case of the ballast, it can be in terms of even the, uh, the compaction effort. This can also be a case. So, that may also translate into these buckling key. Then ineffective or the missing fastenings. Now, when we talk about these fastenings, these fastenings can be rail to rail or these can be rail to sleeper. Both of the types of fastenings are there. So, when you are talking about rail to sleeper, it means they are trying to hold the rails at the top of the sleeper, so that they are not moving laterally or longitudinally. And when you say the rail to rail, it means it is trying to provide a continuity on the track by the combination of the rails. Now, if these fastenings which have been used, they are not good enough, there is anything which is missing in terms of the characteristics of these fastenings and these fastenings we will be talking later. So, it may be say a toe load, toe deflection, it can be the size and the weight. So, any such type of ineffectiveness if it is there, that may also create a problem or say the fastening is altogether missing at a location, it has gone out, is not there, is not put, uh, working there as the function which is required out of that particular fastening. So, then also there will be an issue. Then laying, distressing, maintaining or raising the track outside the specified rail temperature range is specifically in the summer. So, here it says specified rail temperature range. Uh, when we are taking up the SWR or LWR that is the short welded rails or the long welded rails, there we will be talking about these particular ranges. One thing which I can tell here is that there is a mean rail temperature, average mean rail temperature and then there is a temperature with respect to which it is going to be operational in terms of a degree centigrade. So, that range actually we need to consider. If it goes beyond these particular ranges, whether it is going down or it is going up, is going to create an issue. Because whatever the standards they have been created, they have been created for a range. And specifically when you talk about a hot weather, when the temperatures are going much above these TM values, then the expected expansions or various other such conditions, they are going to be extreme. And that is where if you work in that particular time period and then the temperatures comes down, you will find that there is an issue again in terms of 
the stress is getting induced. Then failure to lubricate the SEJ in time, the switch expansion joint. We have talked about this previously also. This is switch expansion joint and this switch expansion joint also needs to be lubricated. And again these lubrications has to be done, there is a very defined time as per the uh, RDSO or Indian Railways standards. At that particular time only that lubrication has to be done so that this keep working. Then excessive creep, jam joints, sunken portion in the welded track, they are also other conditions which may cause the buckling of the track. Jam joints they are again they are all related with the change in the temperatures the movement of the rails. Okay. So, what is the identification of the buckling of the rails? The presence of kinks in the track, I have shown you in the very first photograph when we started discussing about the buckling of rails. So, the track has gone in this form. So, instead of on a straight movement or a straight alignment which can be shown by this dotted line. So, there are kinks which have got produced. So, if any such thing is happening it means on that particular portion of the track there is a buckling. There is an absence of gaps in the SWR portion of the track. SWR I already told you this is the short welded rail. So, in the case of short welded rails which are usually three panels of 13 meter long rail and broad gauge. So, after those three panels, so you have three panels which have been jointed with another panel and then there is another panel. So, this is this becomes SWR because they have been welded together. So, here this is a weld. But now, if this point we are providing another rail which again can be SWR, but has been jointed together by way of the fish plated joint, then in that case at this particular location there is a gap being provided. And if this gap is not there, then there will be a problem. So, what happens usually is happens in the morning hours of the hot days. Then expansion or contraction of the SEJ which, ha which is having a permissible value of plus minus 20 mm more than the theoretical range which is given for the LWR tracks. So, there is a LWR manual of Indian Railways in which all these uh, temperature ranges are being given. So, there it says that if the expansion or contraction is within plus minus 20 mm it is fine, but if it is going beyond plus minus 20 mm then there is an issue. Then high percentage of hollow sleepers, there will be a movement of the rails and because of that that the fastenings are getting loose. So, that sort of condition may also indicate that something is happening here. So, what can be the precautions against the buckling of rails? Provide expansion gaps as is specified in the manual. Because whatever the problems which we have discussed previously, obviously the solution will come out of those particular problems only. We talked about the expansion gap, we talked about the inadequacy of the expansion gap and that is what it says that we have to maintain those expansion gaps as per the manuals of the type of track which is being used. Here we are talking first of all an SWR portion of the track. So, this is worst case. Another is proper patrolling of the track when the rail temperature exceeds Tm plus 20 degree centigrade that I said there is a Tm plus minus delta T. Now, it gives you the value of delta T here. It says plus 20 degree centigrade that means we are talking about summer time and this is what one we were talking in terms of the various causes. We said in during the summer there are problems. So, during summer time if the rail temperature exceeds 
this value of Tm plus 20 degree centigrade say the mean temperature was 35. So, it becomes 35 plus 20 55 degree centigrade. So, that is the range up to which it is okay, but as soon as the real temperature goes beyond that then some action has to be taken. And for that reason this real temperature this is being measured by the gang which moves on the track. So, they usually keep a thermometer with them and they will be taking the temperature at different locations to identify that uh, how the temperatures are changing. And as soon as they found that it has gone beyond this particular range they record it and inform it. And that is where the precautionary action will start. Then gap survey, it is to be done in the case of SWR and adjusted before the onset of the hot weather. Before the hot weather starts, a gap survey is to be conducted and this gap survey means we have to look at whatever number of gaps are there on the track. So, all these gaps are going to be examined with respect to what are the widths which are available at that point of a time. And if they are within the permissible range it is fine, but if it are going up to the permissible range and there is an expected condition that uh, then it will shorten out. In those cases we have to again take a precautionary measure. Then grease the fish plates before the setting of the summer. So, if the fish plates have been used here or these particular joints then these needs to be greased. So, that the lubrication effect remains there. Take adequate precautions to reduce the creep. We have already talked about various types of measures which can be taken so that the creeps can be reduced. Then avoid over tightening of the fish bolts. There is a particular value up to which the fish bolts should put the stress on the fish plates and the rails at that particular location where the hole is being given. So, if it is over tightened then that means that will increase the stress level at the hole. Second, it will not allow the movement of the rail and that movement is required. So, this is an important aspect if this is not being allowed that means it will cause the stress. When rail is trying to move you are not allowing to move so obviously some stresses will get induced. Do not carry out the operations which impair the lateral resistance of the track when the rail temperature is high. We already talked about it that there is a range of the rail temperature we said it is Tm plus 20 degree centigrade as soon as it is going beyond that or for various specific components of the track if there are some other values which have been given. So, if the temperature goes beyond those values then no such operation should be done because it will cause an impact to the lateral resistance. And we did talk about the lifting of the track and all uh, some other type of uh, such uh, maintenance works which can be there say deep screening of the ballast. Adequate shoulder ballast should be provided at all the sections. The shoulder ballast means we are talking about the track and on this track the rails are being provided. Uh, so, this is a sleeper and then at the top of that the rail is provided. So, we are talking about the ballast which is being provided on these shoulders. So, what is that width and if you remember we did talk about these widths. So, somewhere around 300 mm. And then we said that if it is on a curved track then on the outer side the values needs to be increased. 
then strengthening can also be done by increasing the sleeper density. This is of course one measure of doing it, but you cannot go in such a case that you have a rail section and then you provide totally all sleepers like this. Now that is not a possibility. So there is always going to be some spacing between the sleepers. We can increase the sleepers up to a certain limit. So if you are increasing the sleeper density, we talked about 1310, we talked about 1540, 1660 sleepers in a 1 kilometer length. That can also help because increasing the sleeper density means you are improving upon the track resistances or the, uh, the track uh, even modulus also. And providing anti-creep fastenings that will also help here or the replacement or tightening of the loose fastenings. If the fastening has gone bad then it should be replaced, if it is loose then it should be tightened. So this will also improve upon the buckling of the track. Now what to do if the track has already buckled? So very first thing a precaution which needs to be taken, please hand signal flag and the detonator on that particular track so as to warn the drivers. So you are reaching a track which has uh, buckled. So the train is moving on this and coming. So if it is happening ahead on this particular track it is buckled, then a flag is being provided here as well as a detonator is placed on the rail head and as soon as this wheel passes at the top of it, it will detonate and will alert the driver. So driver will look for what is the information which is being given additionally on the track and accordingly will reduce the speed of the train so that the train can very easily move on the buckled track. Cut the buckled rails apart. If it is a big length, if there is a lot of buckling which has happened then it has to be cropped and the length which shall be there which is being cropped is not less than 6.5 meters. So this is also an important aspect to, to be taken care of. Then correct the alignment of the track and insert the cut rails of required length to close the gap and the welding done on the joints at both the ends. So wherever such problems are there, first of all alignment needs to be corrected because as we said there is a possibility of a movement of such type of a a uh, lateral movement which is causing the kinks here. So we are correcting it. If a rail section has to be cut, then rail section will be cut and will be replaced by another rail section which is of good quality. And then wherever the gaps are coming, those gaps has to be closed. So there is one way that you weld those gaps. So if a rail section has been cut here, so this section has been cut. So a new section has been placed, so the welding is going to be done. So this may happen at one end, it can happen at both the ends. Then use the special fish plates and the screws for those connections. So the connections which are provided here, where the gaps are there. So at that point, some special fish plates can be utilized so that it can uh, just uh, take care of the buckling which may going to happen. And similarly the screws and when we say these fish plates and screws are being used here, these uh, screws should have an adequate strength or resistance power so that it can take up the stresses which are going to induce because of the buckling. Use the track with the speed restrictions. If any of the track which has buckled, it is better that we go for a speed restriction on that track. And this speed restriction can be of something like 30 kilometers per hour or even less. So these values, they are again being specified depending on the what type of condition is there on a track, at which location the track is, what type of track is. Based on that, the speed restrictions can be followed. They are already being prescribed. So we have to follow that. It may not be possible to do any more until the temperature drops when the joints must be adjusted. So now what you have to do if something has happened and it is a hot time, so let us wait. Wait till the temperature goes down 
and when the temperature goes down then only the adjustment of the joints etc will be done. So, we talked about T m plus 20 degree centigrade. So, if it comes down less than that then only some precautionary measures or, or the uh, actions related to the track buckling will be taken. Now, particular care must be taken to see that the factors which contribute to the buckling like jammed joints, the seized fish plates or the shortage of ballast, all of such things they have been given proper attention. And this proper attention does not mean that the something has happened today and uh, then we follow it up by a one month or two months or three months time. Again, time is an important commodity here and there is a specified time. Depending on what type of problem has happened, it may be that you have to take care of within 3 days, you may be take care of within 15 days or you may not be doing anything at the moment because the amount of that distress which has caused in the track is not of so high level where you, it needs immediate attention to be taken. But at that same time it says that you have to keep observation on that track. So, whatever type of attention is required that should be taken up if it is written within 15 days it should be rectified then without delay within 15 days that should be rectified. So, this is what the meaning here. Now, let us talk about another condition that is hogging of the rail hand. Now, rail hand this can hog we have discussed uh, this type of a phenomena previously also but now we are taking into more detail. This is that one of its end or both of the ends they have gone vertically downward. So, there is a bending of the rail end. So, the rail is provided, but at the end it goes in this form. Now, this hogged rail end in the track is ascertained by unfinishing fishing the joints, removing the fastenings you have to remove. And then the measurement is to be done and the way of measurement it is using a 1 meter long straight edge which is placed at the top of it. So, 1 meter long straight edge is going to be placed here at the top of the rail head. And there will be another rail on the other side the problem has happened in this form. And when the and that particular point at the central location we try to identify that how much this has gone down. So, what should have been the level and what is the new level of that. So, that will define that this is the amount of hogging. Now, this is shown here the same diagram which I have created previously you have a one rail here there is a rail 2 this is a joint, there is a hogging. We have placed a straight edge here and it is being placed in such a manner that it is 500 mm on either side. So, that means this is the center line of the straight edge and at this point we are measuring the value. So, what is the total value that is A, what is the value which have been as B. So, the difference between these two values and A and B is going to give you the amount of battering which has happened or hogging which has happened at this rail end. Now, we can talk about the battering of rail end. It is again more or less correlated with the hogging which has happened. Now, rail end batter occurs when the joint gaps are excessive. Now, when these joint gaps are excessive that means it was supposed to be only this much gap, but in actual it has gone into this value. So, this is an actual gap. Now, what is the problem if this actual gap has uh, increased beyond the permissible value? So, 
So, in this case there is going to be an issue with respect to the interactions, interactions of the wheel with the rail head. So, what are the impacts which are going to be there at this particular end? Now, let us talk about that. The fish plates do not fit snugly or get loosened. Now, when the wheel comes at the top of this, at this position and it is moving and the gap is there, then there is a possibility that the wheel will hit the forward rail end. And when it hits the forward rail end, now this fish plates which are provided here along with the bolt set nuts, if they are not being put in a right tightened manner, then that loosening will start happening and slowly and slowly this will keep increasing. Then worsening of the contact surface between the rails and the sleepers, that is rails and sleepers, this is the contact area. So, as the pressure is there, so whatever connections which being provided at this point with respect to the sleeper, here also similar plate and the connections will be there. So, if this hitting is coming in this form, there is a force which is acting in the front direction, there is a force, a component which is going to act in the downward direction. This downward direction of a force is trying to bring this type of a condition to the rail end and if there is a movement, so this fish plates are getting loose, the connections at this point of the rail and the sleeper, they are getting loose. So, that is a worsening of the surface. Then shaken or the loosening of the ballast at the sleeper, that is also the thing which will happen because there is another component, ballast, as the sleeper moves and this has loosened out the contact between the rail and the sleeper and if there is a movement of the sleeper in any of the direction, it will also impact the ballast. Now, rail and batter is measured as the difference in the height of the rail at its end at the point 30 centimeter away from the rail end. So, we will go beyond like 30 centimeter at this point what is the height and at this point whatever is the height on the basis of that this value is going to be top. When the rail end batter is excessive, but the rail is otherwise good, then the ends of the rail can be cropped and it can be reused. Now, what it says if the batter is up to 2 mm, it is classified an average. We can go ahead with the same, but if it is between 2 mm, 3 mm, it is severe and then we have to probably go for the cropping here. So, we will be stopping here and uh, we will be discussing uh, the other three uh, issues which may otherwise cause in the case of the rails that is uh, the corrugations, corrosions, uh, those things which we were supposed to uh, take today, but because we were discussing about uh, the previous two aspects in a much more detail, so the time has moved out. So, let us meet in the next lecture. Till then, thank you.